I didn't know that this would be the effect of drink, stopping drinking. I knew that I would somehow have more time and spend less money, but this is something I didn't expect. Today we're going to talk about a very controversial topic, alcohol. Alcohol is wildly available and socially accepted drug. It seems to be everywhere, especially in Europe where I live, um, especially in big cities. I live in Berlin and people do not really need an excuse to drink. Uh, alcohol is available in most social situations, not only on weekends where people party, but also, let's say, after work drinks or dinner with friends or family, vernissage at the gallery, there's always alcohol, even for free. So it seems that uh, you don't even need to search for alcohol. It's wildly available everywhere in a big city. And this makes it really difficult, not because, not only because it is difficult to form a habit in such an environment, but also because of the potential social rejection that you might experience if you decide to quit drinking in such an environment where everyone seems to be doing just that. I've tried that twice once in 2017 and the second time two years ago. The second time was more successful. It's been two years since I had a drop of alcohol in my mouth and so far so good. I don't have any cravings. And if you're thinking about quitting drinking alcohol and you're looking for some encouragement and for some support system, then this video is for you. I will not only share my story, but we will also talk about why it is so difficult to quit drinking, we will talk about dopamine, we will also talk about some unexpected benefits that I experienced that are not so obvious um, to most people and we will also talk about tips on how to really overcome this addiction. So before we continue with the video, I want to say that I'm not a medical professional, so if you feel like you need to seek medical help, please do that with professional assistance. I am just sharing my own journey um, and I hope that this will just inspire you to take further action. So let's start with the first thing. Why is it so hard to quit drinking? And I would like to refer to the video of uh, the interview that Jordan Pat Patterson uh, did on YouTube. It's available, I will link it down below, where he says that if you want to stop drinking, you need to find something better than alcohol because alcohol is great. You know, you might say, well, why do people drink too much? It's like, if you like alcohol, that's a stupid question. So it's definitely shocking to some people when you say that you decide to quit drinking. The first question they say is like, why? <laughs> because um, they associate it with a lot of fun. Now, Jordan Pattinson says that if you are really serious about quitting drinking, then you need to have something in your life that is much more exciting than that. Because alcohol consumption leads to a spike in dopamine, which of course makes you feel good, like many other addictive drugs or addictive behaviors. We could make a separate video just on dopamine, but I don't have to because there's already so much great content out there online. In the, for this video, however, I just want to mention a few key ingredients that are related to quitting um, addictive behavior and the references that I'm using in this video I'm taking from the book The Molecule of More from Dr. Daniel Liberman and Michael Long as well as the podcast about dopamine from Dr. Andrew Huberman. So basically dopamine is essential for our development because um, dopamine is exactly the molecule that makes us want to do things. So it's essential for our survival because it tells us to go and search for food, uh, go and search for water, um, it, it's responsible for our desire to um, procreate, find shelter and so on. However, in the modern um, environment, where we are mostly not challenged by such um, lack of food or lack of shelter and so on, um, dopamine, of course, makes us want to go after things 
that um, we think would make us happy or we think that it would somehow increase uh, position in society and so on. So what happens when we drink alcohol or use any other drugs, because yes, alcohol is a drug and so is nicotine, and it's actually one of the most uh, dangerous drugs, um, which people don't realize, but it's just legal, so that's the only difference between <laughs> alcohol and other drugs. What happens when you drink alcohol is that your desire secret is getting an intense blast of chemicals and it puts your brain out of this chemical balance. Um, the stimulation it provides is so intense that you would rather, uh, I mean not you personally, but like uh, the person who engages in this activity would rather uh, pursue more alcohol consumption than pursue other things. At some point, uh, the brain feels like alcohol is the answer to everything. Feeling sad? Drink a glass of wine. Uh, having a good time with your friends? Have alcohol. Got fired? Drink alcohol. Got a new job? Drink alcohol. And so when you stimulate your dopamine system in that way, the, the, the system re responds with asking for more stimulation. And when you get a dopamine spike uh, from, for example, drinking uh, a shot of vodka, you will also get, um, you, the, the, your dopamine levels will spike first, but then they will go under the baseline. So the baseline is basically your normal balance um, level of dopamine. And after the spike, it will go below your baseline, so you will feel really bad which will create the craving um, in your brain for wanting more because you want to go back into this good feeling level and then you will continue to seek um, the activity that brings you the spike. However, the amount of deployable dopamine, so the dopamine that is already available in the brain because it needs time to, to be produced, so the amount of, of available dopamine is limited. So after a few hits, so to say, you will not be able to feel the same spike and the level of uh, this dopamine drop will be even more severe, so you will feel even worse. This is why um, people tend to go into this binge drinking spiral because they want to continue to get this dopamine spike and they cannot get it, and but the brain doesn't understand it, so it, it wants to keep getting the same um, effect. So you can see how dopamine plays a role in making you crave more, but also making you feel um, quite depleted and bad after these spikes. This, this tends to create a behavior, addictive behavior, that uh, is so hard to break when you want to quit drinking. So now let's go to some good news. If you are watching this video, it means that you're already looking for information about quitting alcohol and you're already setting the intention, the desire to actually do something, change behavior. And as Dr. Andrew Huberman says in his other podcast about um, neuroplasticity of our brain, this is the first and the most important step into changing your brain chemistry. Your brain wouldn't change simply because of the experience. It will change from you setting the intention to change to make the decision that you're making to change. So this is the good news and this is tip number one. Make this intentional. Write it down in your journal. If you're not journaling yet, this would be a good time to start um, because this is going to be a journey and it's a, it's a journey that requires a lot of reflection. Um, if you don't want a journal, that's fine too. Um, set the intention for yourself in your agenda. Tell maybe a, close, uh, a person close to you that you have this intention, but make it very visible to yourself um, and make a commitment that that's, that's the change that you are expecting from yourself. Tip number two is something that a lot of people kind of forget about when they decide to quit drinking 
is to consider it as a project. We usually get really motivated about um, a new idea and we want this thing to change fast and we want to learn fast or we want the change to happen fast. But if you have been drinking for several years, you cannot expect that you will be able to quit drinking from one day to another. What you need to do is um, accept the fact that it is a project, it's going to have several steps and um, it's going to take time. Habit formation takes time. And do not blame yourself for, let's say, setting up a, a good intention and then failing. This is what happened to me. Uh, I mean, and now I think that this is a part of the process. When I decided back in 2017 that I don't want to drink on weekends anymore, I don't want to party, uh, I don't want to have this um, behavior, I was really motivated. However, I didn't plan on how I would do this. I just decided that that's what I want to do, but I had absolutely no plan and no um, support system. So the next weekend, uh, I just fell into the old habits because I was surrounded by friends and they kind of found a good excuse that we should all have a bottle of wine and bo bottle of water, yeah, it's uh, like already, <laughs> it's part of my life now, bottle of water, so like it just comes out, but yeah, at the time it was a bottle of wine, um, and at the time I just uh, blamed myself so much that even though I had the intention to quit drinking, it just uh, didn't happen right away, and I wouldn't drink for like two or three weeks, but then I would drink again, and I would kind of like blame myself. Consider this as a process. Tell yourself that you have this intention and that you will try several things. It's a project and uh, be patient with yourself. Tip number three, before you start or before you quit completely, uh, first start measuring your consumption. Measuring what you're doing has been proven as a very good way of new habits formation and I there are books written about this and and so on so a friend of mine he for example uh, started to measure the amount of alcohol he was consuming on weekends without changing the amount just measuring and he was also measuring how much money he was spending while doing so and in this money spending he would write down not only the alcohol he consumed but basically everything that um, was the result of um, alcohol consumption. Measure everything that you're doing when you're consuming alcohol. The amount of alcohol you consume, but also the amount of money that you spend. And do this for like, I don't know, it depends on how often you drink, but let's say uh, at least four weeks if you're just drinking on weekends so that you have some track record, so to say. And this will already help open your eyes on your consumption habits and on how much money you're spending. Tip number four, um, set yourself a time frame for which you want to quit drinking. Do not just make a lifetime commitment because it might scare you away. Tell yourself that you just want to try for, let's say, 30 days. It's quite personal because it also depends on how often you drink. Um, you know, for some people already having a week without alcohol might be challenging. But I find that 30 days is quite a, a big period of time. Um, if you are used to drinking every day and this could be uh, done, for example, for uh, January when a lot of people try this and January is coming up very soon. So this could be like a one month challenge. Um, you can also do three months if you feel like you're strong enough. Three months is a very um, considerable amount of time to actually see the benefits, form the habit and really see the benefits that you couldn't see right away. So do not commit to like just lifetime experience. Just say, I will just do this for X amount of time and then I will continue to drink again. And this will give your mind kind of a, a time frame and this will allow you to also tell people 
that you're just trying something, you're making a challenge, and then they might support you even more uh, rather than if you tell them that you are doing this for a lifetime. So tip number four is um, something that helped me personally a lot. And I know it's, let's say, it might not help everyone. It is identity change. So what is identity change? People tend to do things that um, are within their identity or values. So we usually are quite protective about our identity and we see them, see ourselves in a certain way and we tend to act in connection with our identity. And therefore, if you decide to do something new, mostly it goes out of your regular identity. So it doesn't correspond to your regular narrative, so to say. So in my case in 2017, um, when I decided to quit drinking the first time, I decided to also change my identity from somebody who used to say that I like wine, I like partying with friends and so on, to someone who says, I do not drink. And it might feel forced in the beginning, especially if you've never practiced this type of approach with anything else. Like so far, I've tried it also for other things and quitting other things. So it works for me very well now. But if you're trying it for the first time, it might feel a bit strange. This is where affirmations can come in. Um, you might want to create some affirmations that go along with this new identity. And when I talk about this to some friends, they sometimes say, well, isn't this dangerous because you're changing who you are? And I mean, of course you are changing who you are because who you are is the person who likes to drink alcohol. And that's exactly what you, you don't want to keep this identity if you want to quit drinking. I mean, of course, if you want to quit, quit drinking, then, you know, you might as well stop watching this video um, and just, you know, there's a, it's a lot of fun drinking. So like, you know, if you want to continue to do this, this is, uh, this is your path and this is your journey and uh, you do you. But if you are serious about uh, quitting drinking, then you cannot uh, possibly manage it without trying to change your identity. So how do you change your identity? Is simply by establishing some new sets of narratives that you tell yourself and also tell others. So imagine you are at a party and imagine you're talking to a friend who offers you a beer and you say no. Then this friend is like, oh, why? Why don't you drink beer? And you say, oh, you know, I'm trying to quit. Like, I know I should quit. I drink too much. But, you know, uh, already I drink too much. This is part of your identity. And then your friend replies, oh, yeah, no, but not, not at all. But, I mean, look at all these people. They all drink, la, la, la. So he tries to talk you out of it. But already you, by saying that you drink too much and you're admitting to the fact that this is like, you, instead of saying that I must, you say I, I should, like you're just like, yeah, I should quit drinking. You are kind of giving away the power and you are just re reconfirming your identity to yourself and to your friend that you're somebody who likes to drink. Instead, when the friend offers you a beer, you say, no, thank you. And if he asks, you say, you know, I just don't drink. I don't drink for the next 90 days. And then there you change the identity. You're not saying, oh, I really like drinking, but I shouldn't. You're saying, I don't drink. I made this decision and this is who I am now. And um, you need to reinforce this identity within yourself, but also when you talk to other people. And you should try avoiding um, statements that are not aligned with this new identity. It might feel forced in the beginning, but after a while, it gets easier and easier. And I must say, for me, the first time I did quit drinking, um, this helped me a lot. And this kept me going for almost a, uh, a year without alcohol. Now, let's look into why I failed. And this is connected to my next tip, which is uh, you need to change your environment. When I did it the first time, my environment remained the same. Let's say that alcohol was encouraged everywhere I went. 
professionally, uh, the business in which I was working at the time was very alcohol heavy. You were drinking with clients, you were drinking with fellow colleagues. Um, uh, people that we were hanging out with were all into alcohol. And this was just such a normality and such a standard practice that you felt like a weirdo for not drinking. So I must say that I still managed to um, keep away from alcohol for an extended period of time, um, probably mostly thanks to two things. So the first thing was that I changed my identity and the second thing was because I found something that was much more exciting than drinking. And this goes to tip number six. Um, you need to find something that drives you much more than the desire to drink. And at the time, I really wanted to launch an online business and a YouTube channel, and I did. I had a, an Amazon store and an e-commerce store, as well as a YouTube channel that talked about Amazon FPA. And this really was driving me so much that instead of drinking in the weekend, I was so eager to open my computer, go to a cafe and just like work on my landing pages, work on my product listing, uh, you know, work on customer success and so on. So I was highly motivated to do this uh, job and not job, but like a new business. And the reason why I also quit drinking like was because I realized that if I do not stop drinking on weekends, there's no way I can start a side hustle which requires me to work on weekends. So business, creating an online business was not only the reason I kept uh, being sober, but it was also the reason why I went sober to begin with. So you, um, so one of the tips is indeed to, like Jordan Patterson says, you need to find something much more exciting, something that really drives you, something that creates desire to work on. Or, you know, some other way to spend your time. Could be, doesn't have to be business, could be um, climbing or yoga or whatever. I do, I must say that I probably wouldn't have failed the first time if I also changed my environment. Even though the desire to quit drinking was very strong and my new obsession with my online business was very strong as well, the reason that I failed was because I felt rejected by the environment in which I remained. I felt the social pressure to drink. I felt that if I don't drink, I am missing out on hanging out with people that I liked. And honestly, whenever I didn't drink, I would just, I mean, the time frame that I didn't drink, I would come home early and, you know, just spend time by myself. And because my partner at the time was drinking, I ended up spending a lot of time myself. I was really alone. And this was the mistake because I didn't create a new environment in which I had a support system of friends that would um, be kind of on the same vibe as me. I felt like my relationship is um, suffering from this and in the end we did get separated. Um, but this was not the only reason. But I felt that I am just being um, rejected, uh, but not in an active way, but let's say I felt isolated. This is the good word. I felt isolated and alone. And this is what uh, you should think about when you are deciding to quit. And I guess this is one of the reasons why people tend to, um, how do I say it? They are scared of quitting drinking because they are scared of not being accepted by their friends. So how do you find like-minded people? Well, First of all, you can comment on the video below and see who else is on your journey and you can create your own community online, but you can also engage in activities where people tend to not drink. For example, people that are really into sports um, or some activities that require you to wake up early are usually um, Usually people who do not drink go to these activities. 
So for me, in my case, what helped me uh, was uh, joining a yoga community where people, uh, maybe they did drink sometimes, but not as much. Some of them didn't drink at all, actually the majority. And because yoga starts really early in the morning, at least the, one, the community where I joined, you just couldn't afford to drink because if you drink, you couldn't do yoga. You're kind of poisoning your system when you drink and it just doesn't go along with values of mental clarity and kind of quieting down your mind and so on. So finding like-minded people might seem challenging, but also don't forget that you might have friends who are already thinking about quitting drinking, but they don't dare to say it. Tip number seven is think ahead of what you're going to say to people when you're going to be in social environments. Of course, I encourage you to change your environment and maybe in the beginning uh, avoid going to bars and, and clubs. Uh, if you are into this, try to uh, meet people for coffee or for daytime activities or for climbing or yoga or like any other activities that do not usually involve drinking. But if you cannot change your environment, let's say that it's a social event at work and people offer you a drink, you need to be prepared what you're going to say. So this is why it's important to think about this in advance and remember what I said about um, making sure that you speak within um, the framework of your new identity. So, for example, what uh, I noticed is that when you tell people that you are like on a break, they tend to want to make you drink because you make them uncomfortable because they are drinking. So instead, uh, tell people that you just don't drink. I mean, of course, with your friends, it will be difficult because they, they know that you used to drink. So you can tell them like, hey, I'm doing a challenge and really would appreciate if you're supportive. I really uh, don't uh, want to drink at the moment and I don't drink. So this is what you can... Um, say to your friends, if it's in a social environment where people don't really know you, you can actually get away with saying that you just don't drink alcohol at all. And what I notice is that people just leave you alone because if they know that you usually drink, they might try to talk you into it. But if you just say, I don't drink, then people are just like, oh yeah, okay. Sometimes they ask why, uh, and we're gonna get to this in a second. But if you just say, I don't drink, they're like, oh yeah, okay, interesting. And they will stop pushing you. So if they ask you why, uh, you would have to think of some non-confronting ways to tell them why. If you are being too confronting or judgmental, uh, it might create some arguments. So uh, people usually tend to uh, project. So they, they, if you say that you, you don't drink, they will think that they are maybe drinking too much. So try to avoid making them feel uncomfortable and instead think of some other ways of like, hey, I'm just trying something new and uh, uh, I decided to do this challenge and it's quite exciting for me because, and you can even say that, you know, admit to the fact that drinking alcohol uh, was fun for you. So don't try to kind of demonize alcohol, especially in an environment where people are holding a glass of alcohol. Of course, you have to also, you might change what you say depending on the situation, because if people are much more open to, uh, let's say, they also are thinking about quitting drinking, then you might go in another direction. But in most social environments, people already have a glass of uh, an alcoholic beverage in their hand. So if you're gonna be judgmental or say how alcohol is poison and how, you know, <laughs> kind of like just try to um, talk more about how you used to drink and now you realize that, you know, you wanna try something different and you are seeking some uh, more clarity, you maybe you're working on a new project, kind of trying not, not to be um, judgmental towards their choice. All right, and the last tip is uh, support yourself with some knowledge from books. So when I did it the first time, I read the book called The Naked Mind and I gave it to a few of my friends and they loved it and everyone who I gave it to actually quit drinking for at least three months afterwards. So The Naked Mind is written by Annie Grace. 
Um, and then I also discovered my another book through my partner. He, um, when he quit drinking, he read a book called uh, Never Enough by Judith Grizzle. And uh, yeah, I, she also talks about dopamine, but also other types of drugs and nicotine and etc. etc. So. Um, if you read about the topic, it will encourage you with some data and also some knowledge and also some uh, ways of how to deal with the social pressure and kind of emotions around alcohol. Um, so these were my eight tips. So now let's finish this video with some unexpected benefits that you might have from quitting drinking. So the obvious benefits are kind of obvious to a lot of people. So Obvious benefits are such as uh, you lose weight. By the way, yes, I lost weight when I stopped drinking. It's insane. Uh, you lose weight not only because you stop drinking caloric beverages, but also because you do not eat. You don't have these cravings for shitty food when you are like hangover or just after a party. So yeah, you make much more so like healthier choices when you don't drink. Then another benefit is that you save money, obviously. You save really a lot of money. You reduce the amount of drama that is in your life and usually the number of, like the chances of you encourage in, in encountering uh, drama, the, it goes higher after like 10 p.m. If you're outside of your house after 10 p.m., uh, usually you, your chances of getting into a difficult situation is, is much higher. Um, when you don't drink anymore, you uh, rarely are outside after 10 p.m. unless you like take a flight or something. I'm mostly in bed already by 9 and I know it might seem boring to some of you, but I really like this lifestyle that I have at the moment. So yeah, you reduce the number of embarrassing moments. Um, and uh, you also start to have, of course, uh, more free time because you don't spend time going out means you that wake up earlier and then you have the whole weekend with a clear mind and uh, really good energy and this allows you to work on projects that you always wanted to work on this allows you to do things that you always wanted to do maybe uh, learn new things um, and this also helps you to develop habits good habits much easier and so now we're going to go to the unexpected benefits that I experienced when I quit drinking alcohol was that I actually started to take pleasure in doing difficult things or doing really simple things. So usually if you drink, you are very demotivated the next days. Uh, it might take one day, but if, as you're getting older, it might take several days for you to recover. So you don't feel motivated to go to the gym, you don't feel motivated to cook your own food, you don't feel motivated to basically sometimes even go outside. So when you actually don't drink alcohol, this problem just goes away. You are so much more, um, like you can pick up things so much easier on Saturday, Sunday, any other day, you just uh, want to do things. And this has to do with dopamine. When your dopamine is depleted and when it goes below baseline, it's very hard for you to start uh, seeking pleasure from doing simple things or hard things like going to the gym. And when you don't drink alcohol, your level of dopamine uh, kind of remains on the baseline. I mean, considering that, of course, you don't have any other addictive behaviors because then, you know, you're depleting your dopamine through other behaviors. But let's say alcohol was the only one you had and you don't have any other destructive behaviors. Your, uh, uh, your dopamine levels are kind of stable and your brain chemistry is in balance. And it is surprising how easy it becomes to really tell your, motivate yourself to do things that would usually not be so exciting for you. I realized that while having a walk in the forest and it was just autumn, like, you know, it was beautiful, but usually I would just pass by and just know, oh yeah, it's pretty. And then I would just kind of engage with my negative thoughts. 
but I started to realize that I could just sit down and enjoy uh, the weather and enjoy the colors and I wouldn't have the desire to like take out my phone and immediately like post things on Instagram or something like this. Um, I just could stay still and enjoy the present moment without the desire to kind of go somewhere else. Um, the same thing happened with reading. I picked up on reading like a lot. I don't know how many books I read in the first year that I stopped drinking, but it was just so easy for me to read, so easy to pick up a book and engage myself in this uh, activity that usually would not be as stimulating, but because I guess my um, uh, levels of dopamine stab stabilized and I will link a study down below which talks about how you put your brain chemistry back into balance after you quit drinking. It was just so much more pleasurable to do simple things. Reading, uh, cooking, just having an engaging conversation with your partner, with, the, with your friend. I stopped also seeking uh, dopamine like I used to. I stopped shopping. I stopped using social media. I used to also think that certain things would make me happier. Like if I buy something, this would make me happier. And, or I see something on Instagram and I would think, okay, I need this. This just went away. I could just take pleasure in very, very simple things. And I deleted social media accounts uh, like a few months after I stopped drinking. Um, almost two years ago as well. And um, because of this, I feel like my brain chemistry just came to balance, uh, which allowed me to engage more the here and now molecule, as he talks about in the book, um, the molecule of more. He, he talks about the other molecule, which is the opposite of dopamine, which actually um, makes you enjoy things that you already have. And it made me such uh, like a much happier person simply because I was not seeking other dopinogenic um, activities or things. Uh, and this is something I didn't expect. Like now that I, it did happen to me, I researched this and I could see that the science confirms this. But at the time, I didn't know that this would be the effect of drink, stopping drinking. I knew that I would somehow have more time and spend less money, but I didn't know that I would be able to just take pleasure in simple things and be just happy with what I have, be just content. And I don't have these waves of um, kind of like uh, my mood doesn't go up and down. It's just stable and of course certain things can happen in anyone's life that are, let's say, dramatic or that cause uh, suffering. But even when these things happened to me in the past two years and they, I've experienced some very like negative events in my life in the last two years, they didn't affect me in the same way as they would have when I was drinking. Actually, I uh, feel very blessed that I quit drinking before they started to happen because I think I was able to manage these negative situations with so much more calm and the presence of mind. Um, I was able to not be reactive and just be in the here and now and um, telling myself, uh, like basically being calm most of the time. Um, so this is why I think this time was so much more successful because quitting drinking just not only improved my life in kind of like obvious ways, um, like I, uh, I don't want to go into all the details, but my life has improved dramatically, but it also uh, has m given me this new state of mind that just keeps me 
content and happy. And this is why I don't want to go back. I don't feel tempted when I feel alcohol. Uh, whenever I pass by a terrace in the summer and people drink a poche pris, which used to be my favorite drink, I acknowledge that, you know, it's great. They have fun and that's what they want to do. And it's cool, you know, um, but I'm like, I don't, I don't get triggered by alcohol. When um, people drink in front of me now, it's so much, so easy for me. I just ignore, like I don't pay, how to say it? It just doesn't come on my radar. Uh, of course, when people ask you about this, you have to talk about it. But otherwise, it's not even like a decision-making process. It's not a consideration process. It doesn't drain my energy or motivation. It doesn't require any discipline. And this is the interesting part because... People that are still drinking, they think that it requires a lot of discipline not to drink because they judge from their own perspective of where they are today. And yes, to quit drinking in the beginning, it requires a lot of things. We already talked about this. But once you're there, once you've reached this point of, I guess, maybe after six months or so, for everyone it's different. So, But I would say from the six months on, you feel so much more comfortable with not drinking. It almost feels insane for you to drink. It feels like it just doesn't make sense. Um, but in order to reach this level of confidence, you need time and you need to go through several stages. Uh, and also you need to gain confidence in yourself. But once you are on this level, it doesn't require at least for me and my partner and some other people that quit drinking that I know, it doesn't require effort. Uh, and it's just amazing. It's, uh, it's, it's almost like a blessing and I don't want to go back. Now, I don't say that I'm um, guaranteed that I will never drink again. This is certainly not my intention, but I'm also aware that um, such... Um, addictive behaviors such as smoking, drinking, and so on, they might creep in and they might come back to you. This is why in um, society of uh, like uh, uh, anonym, anonymous alcoholics, they tend to say to you that you should take one day at a time and kind of take every day as a new, new, just one day at a time. And yeah, nobody is immune to this. I, I believe that it is... Um, it, there is a possibility that people that don't drink alcohol, including myself, might come back to this habit. But at this state of mind that I have today, and with the knowledge I have, I definitely do not have any desire to drink again. And I feel very confident about this today. I hope that this video helped you get confidence and get some encouragement in your journey. If you like this video, please give it a like and share it with a friend that you might, yeah, that you think it might help them. And um, if you want to hear more about other challenges I did related to dopamine, subscribe because I plan to do another one on social media. On this channel, I also talk about food and um, how to change your habits and with regards to food um, to a much more healthier lifestyle so tune in if you, that's uh, that's your thing thank you for watching and good luck